Welcome to the psychology lecture series. In this video, we are going to talk about factor analysis. Factor analysis is a collection of methods used to examine how underlying unobservable variables that are reflected in the observed variables. This is also called as dimension reduction. It is also called data reduction as it is used to reduce a large number of variables into fewer number of factors. Factor analysis is a part of general linear model. Charles Spearman was the first psychologist to discuss common factor analysis in his paper in 1904. It provided few details about his methods and was concerned with single factor models. He discovered that school children's scores on a wide variety of unrelated subjects were positively correlated, which led him to postulate that a general mental ability or G factor underlies and shapes human cognitive performance. Louis Thurston summarized common factor analysis with multiple factors in his book, The Vector of Mind. He introduced several important factor analysis concepts including communality, uniqueness, and radiation. He advocated for simple structure and developed methods of rotation that could be used as a way to achieve such structure. Stephenson, a student of Spearman, distinguished between R factor analysis oriented towards the study of individual differences and Q factor analysis oriented toward subjective intra individual differences. Raymond Cattell was a strong advocate of factor analysis and psychometrics and used Thurston's multi factor theory to explain intelligence. Cattell also developed the screed test and similarity coefficients. Factor analysis in psychology is most often associated with intelligence research. It is also used in personality, attitude, beliefs, etc. Let us now look at some of the assumptions. The first one is no outliers are present in the data set. That means that no extreme data are present in the data set. For example, Consider the following values. The last value is an outlier that overwhelms the entire data. So most of our data sets will not include outliers. The next one is that adequate sample size must be present. This means that you must have more variables than you have factors. Each variable must also have more data values than you have factors. The data sets must possess no perfect multicollinearity as factor analysis is an interdependency technique. Homoscedasticity is not required between variables. Homoscedasticity means that all variables have the same finite variance. This is also known as homogeneity of variance. In other words, the curves do not have to possess the same size standard deviations. The next one is linearity. Factor analysis is also based on linearity assumption. Non-linear variables can also be used. However, after transfer, it changes into linear variable. The last one is that the data must be at least interval. Nominal and ordinal data do not work with factor analysis. Interval data are assumed. Let us now take a look at some of the important terminologies of factor analysis. Factor loading are those values which explain how closely they are related to each one of the factors discovered. They are also known as factor variable correlations. Communality is the amount of variance a variable shares with all the other variables. This is the proportion of variance explained by the common factors. 
eigenvalue represents the total variance explained by each factor. Percentage of variance is the percentage of the total variance attributed to each other. Factor loadings are the correlation between the variables and the factors. A factor matrix contains the factor loadings of all the variables on all the factors. Factor scores are composite scores estimated for each respondent on the derived factors. Some of the important methods of factor analysis are the centroid method, the principal components method, and the maximum likelihood method. Some of the methods of factor extraction are given below. The centroid method was developed by Lewis Leon Thurston. This method was frequently used until about 1950 before the advent of large capacity high speed computers. This method extracts the largest sum of absolute loadings for each factor in turn. It is defined by linear combinations in which all weights are either plus 1 or minus 1. The purpose of this method is to maximize the sum of loadings disregarding signs. Here, loadings mean, for example, the hypothesis may hold that the average student's aptitude in a field. Here, the numbers 8 and 5 are the factor loadings. The next one is principal component analysis which is a statistical procedure that uses an orthogonal transformation to convert a set of observations of possibly correlated variables into a set of values of linearly correlated variables called principal components. It was initially invented by Carl Pearson in 1901 and later independently developed by Harold Hotelling and named by him in 1930s. Principal component analysis is a backbone of modern data analysis. It is a mathematical tool from applied linear algebra. It is a simple non-parametric method of extracting relevant information from confusing data sets. It provides a roadmap for how to reduce a complex data set to a lower dimension. The steps to formulate are, first, we have to get the data. Next, we have to subtract the mean. Next, we have to calculate the covariance matrix. Next, we have to calculate the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of covariance. Next, we have to choose components and form a feature vector. Finally, we can derive the new data set. The next one is the maximum likelihood method, which is the procedure of finding the value of one or more parameters for a given statistic, which makes the known likelihood distribution a maximum. Factor rotation is a procedure used for the purpose of simplifying the interpretation of the obtained factors and also to increase number of high and low positive loadings. There are two basic types and they are orthogonal rotation and oblique rotation. Factors remain independent in orthogonal rotation and factors are allowed to correlate in oblique rotation. Some of the types of orthogonal rotation are Verimax, Quartimax and Equimax. Verimax simplifies factors and it tends to produce group factors. Quartimax simplifies variables and it tends to produce a general and small group factors. Equimax was designed to balance Verimax and Quartimax tendencies. The types of oblique rotation are Promax and Direct Oblimin. Promax was preferred because it was simpler to calculate by hand, but as of today, newer libraries tend to use direct oblimin by default. Interpreting the factors 
are done on the basis of large loadings. It is often taken to be above 0 0.3. After the statistical computations of factoring and rotation have been completed, we can interpret the factors. This is achieved by inspecting the pattern of high and low loading of each factor on the subsets or the variables. It is to be remembered that that the higher the loading, the most important the factor. The well-defined factor should have at least three high loading variables and each factors are assigned meaning, that is factor naming. I hope you like this video. Please share these videos with everyone who are preparing for this exam and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.